the previous lectures we discussed about the general properties of uh, liquids and particularly about vapor pressure of a liquid. Now, in this lecture we discuss about the other two main important specific characteristic properties of liquid that is surface tension and viscosity. All these characteristic properties vapor pressure, surface tension, viscosity all these are somewhat related more or less all are related to the characteristic behavior of molecules of a liquid on the surface compared to their behavior in the bulk. Means the surface tension is when the liquid molecules on the surface in the case of vapor pressure already we have discussed about the unbalanced residual forces on the surface of a molecule. Suppose, if we consider a molecule on the surface and if we consider a molecule on the bulk, if we consider a molecule on the surface and a molecule on the bulk, then in the case of vapor pressure we told that the molecule in the bulk is surrounded by many other molecules around it and the net forces acting on it are balanced by one another and so net force acting on it is considered to be 0. But whereas, if we consider a molecule on the surface then the molecule on the surface will experience intermolecular force only by certain number of molecules from particular side of the molecule means the that part of molecule which is towards the bulk that part only will experience intermolecular attraction because that is only surrounded by other liquid molecules from the bulk. But whereas, the molecule the part the part of the molecule that is open to the air that is not that will not experience any intermolecular force. So, the net force acting the net for the net intermolecular force acting on the surface of the on the molecule of the surface is less and it is not balanced like the molecule in the bulk. So, on the molecule of a surface on the molecule of a surface always there exists there exists residual and unbalanced forces acting on it, but in bulk, but in bulk the net forces acting on a particular molecule will be nullified will be nullified. So, as a result what happens is this molecule is more pulled inwards this molecule is pulled inwards as this like that all the molecules on the surface are always pulled inwards due to this inward pull. So, therefore, molecule on the surface molecule on the surface experience an inward pull by the surrounding molecules surrounding molecules in the bulk. So, it experience an overall inward pull 
as a result what happens the surface area the surface area tend to decrease the surface area tend to decrease because all these molecules so suppose if you consider this as a surface this molecule tend to go inwards this molecule tend to go inwards like that all the molecules will tend to go inwards as a result as all of them are going inwards the surface area always tend to decrease therefore the surface area the surface area always will be least possible that means the shape of the molecule the shape of the surface always adjust itself in such a way that the surface area of the liquid is least minimum because of the inward pull always the molecules will tend to move inwards so the surface area will be keep decreasing right therefore so now the surface tension is nothing but the force that is acting on the force that is acting on the surface molecules which tend to pull the molecule inward is what we call surface tension the force by which this molecule and the surface experience the inward pull is what we call the surface tension due to surface tension the shape of the liquid surface always such that it will have least surface area now geometrically if we think least possible surface area we can have it with spherical geometry spherical shape spherical shape or geometry is even with least surface area if you take if you imagine a spherical and if you try to put it on a then the surface area is only this much but whereas if you take any if you take any square or triangle or any other thing then the area that it occupies obviously in spite of the same volume if you consider the uh, two geometrical figures one is spherical and one is a square both having same volume if you consider the surface area for spherical will be least compared to square or triangle or any other geometrical figure so is the reason that therefore liquid drops liquid drops are always liquid drops are always spherical in shape liquid drops are always spherical in shape as you know it very well that when you allow a liquid to flow along a tube let the uh, outlet of the tube have any geometry or shape whether you take a tube of rectangular geometry i mean or the plane uh, outlet or uh, the square outlet or you have a spherical outlet or you have any other hexagonal tube or anything but remember that the liquid that comes out from this have both of these the liquid that is coming out of the tube having a rectangular or rather outlet or spherical outlet in both the cases the shape of the drop is always spherical it will never be uh, rectangular or triangular or hexagonal or any other the reason being that the droplet is always is formed such that it uh, it has least surface area the least surface area is possible only with spherical drop so the droplets are always always spherical irrespective of whatever may be the geometry of the tube from which the liquid flow is allowed right so one very important 
consequence of the surface tension is shape of the liquid drops is always spherical irrespective of the shape of the vessel or tube in which the liquid flow takes place right and this force this surface tension which we have defined as the force that is acting on the surface of the liquid such that the surface the molecules will have a uh, inward pull and the surface area will be minimized this force always acts on perpendicular to the surface of the liquid means suppose here this if you consider then this is always perpendicular the force acting will always be perpendicular now this if you take the tangential line if you take then from this and this this is uh, this force is we can calculate in terms of surface energy but before going to that other important consequences of the surface tension also that we should learn very clearly the other consequences of surface tension among the liquids is that the movement of the movement of insects on the surface of a liquid without drawing inwards and also the liquid flow liquid flow through roots water that flows through roots into the plant and the rays of liquids like water in the upward direction when a tube is inserted over the uh, liquid uh, tank and the flow of liquids like mercury downwards also it is it is opposite of surface tension due to difference in the cohesion forces and the attractive forces like this and the cleansing action of soaps and detergents also involve the concept of surface tension so all this in details now we have to discuss the surface tension is the force acting on an imaginary line of unit length drawn tangentially to the surface and pulled inwards in minimizing or reducing the surface area by one unit due to this uh, surface tension as already we told shape of the liquid drops is always spherical shape of the liquid drops is always spherical and insects move on surface of a liquid without drowning inwards the capillary action the capillary action is due to surface tension of a liquid what is capillary action capillary action is nothing but when you 
if you take a, a liquid reservoir into the liquid reservoir liquid like water or ethyl alcohol any or any type of that uh, liquid if you take then when you invert a tube over here when you invert a tube over the liquid then the height of the liquid the li the liquid raises upwards liquid raises upwards by height of edge then this upward this upward motion of liquid with a convex meniscus the capillary action what is capillary action as i told it is the upward motion of a liquid along a tube when inverted in a reservoir with convex surface so this takes a convex surface the convex surface is because the molecules are pulled inwards so it reduces so this is what you are the least surface area you can easily imagine that this is the as the mole, all the molecules are pulling inwards so all will it will be like all are pulling inwards so this is what the surface is meniscus is with convex surface are the better is we say convex meniscus is what we call this easily you can understand take water in a tube and if you look at it the upper part that is what we call meniscus is always in convex shape and this is because that the molecules are tend to move in the downward direction as a result the surface area minimizes so it acquires the what do you call convex shape then what is the reason for the molecule the liquid to raise up the reason for the liquid to raise up is because of the cohesive forces dominate the repulsive force the attractive forces among the liquid the uh force that acting between the layer of the liquid and wall of the vessel that makes that becomes more dominant than the liquid liquid attractions due to the lesser liquid liquid attractions the this is the wall of the vessel will attract the wall of the vessel will attract the liquid so as the wall of the vessel keeps attracting and this force acts against the gravity this because raising up is something against the gravity because gravity is the downward flow here the liquid is raising up so the liquid raises up to certain extent that the weight of the liquid in the tube should balance the gravitational pull till till that how to what height that this liquid raises the height to which it raises depends on the mass of the liquid such that the surface tension or the mass of the liquid such that it uh, neutral it balances the gravitational pull till that height it will increase right so at this height the surface tension of the liquid becomes equal to gravitational force till that height the liquid raises regarding that we derive a small equation to explain that but before that let us go more into details of this uh, applicative part so first of all the raise of a liquid over the reservoir when a tube is inverted uh into certain height is because of the surface tension here the cohesive forces that is the force between the molecule liquid and the wall predominates but if you take the liquids like mercury then 
it is the downward pull what we observe and in that case then you will get meniscus in a concave in case of liquids like mercury in case of liquids like mercury the meniscus is concave shape and experience downward so what happens is there the as you know mercury we, which is a highly viscous liquid mercury which is high which is a highly viscous liquid where the intermolecular force dominate the cohesive force see cohesive force is nothing but the force that the attractive force between the wall of the vessel and the liquid in case of mercury the force between the wall of the vessel and liquid is very less that means liquid will not stick to the wall but whereas in other liquids like water as you know very well you take in a glass tube you take some you first you fill it up with water okay then you empty the tube suppose in the tube or in a vessel you first you fill it with water then you empty it when you empty it after you emptying it at same temperature if you observe still some water gets stick to the wall that's what clearly we observe that is because of the cohesive force is dominating but into the same or rather similar tube or vessel if you fill it with mercury keep it for some time and afterwards you again empty it like in the water but afterwards if you observe not even a small drop of mercury will get stick to the wall of the tube water will get stick it will not be completely dried up but if you fill it up mercury and you empty it after emptying it if you, if you observe not even a sming, single small drop of mercury will get stick to this what is the reason the reason is that here cohesive forces are not dominating here the intermolecular forces are dominating so as a result it means the attractive force between the mercury and the wall is does not exist or rather they will not be dominated but here that will dominate and so some water will get stuck to the wall so is the reason that in this case the upward pull the increase in height is not the factor but here it will be decrease in height and in this case what do you call the surface is because of that the surface is concave the meniscus is concave and in this case it is convex then when it comes to the factors affecting the surface tension with increase in temperature with increase in temperature the attractive forces decreases so the inward pull decreases with increase in temperature the escaping tendency of molecules because of with increase in kinetic energy as in the case of vapor pressure already we have discussed so what happens with increase in temperatures the molecule on the surface will tend to escape out more easily because of uh, increase in kinetic energy so as a result the escaping tendency increases but not the inward pull that means the surface tension is decreasing right and the other thing so with increase in temperature surface tension of a liquid decreases and adding certain chemicals adding certain chemicals again will decrease the surface tension or increase the surface tension for example if you uh, this surface uh, this surfactants addition of detergents the, uh, which is in general we call it as surfactant actually from that uh, property called surfactant the detergents also have got the trademarks like surf and all so that surf is actually a surfactant the surfactant is when you add a surfactant to the liquid then this the, these chemicals this uh, sodium salts of the fatty acids because of their large molecular size they will decrease the 
surface tension. Because of their large molecular size, the intermolecular pull is decreased because some of the surface is now occupied by this solute. As a result, that means the surface, all these are being surface properties, some of the surface is occupied by the added chemicals that is the salts of fatty acids, sodium salts of uh, fatty acids, sodium permeate, sodium oleate, potassium formate, all this. So, as a result, the surface tension decreases. And of course, because of the decrease in surface tension is the reason that uh, the hydrophilic end and hydrophobic end of parts of the salts will get stuck to the greasy part of the cloth and is pulled inwards and the grease will be removed. So, this, sir, this cleansing action of soap, cleansing action of detergents also consequence of this surface tension and of course, there is another term called adsorption. This adsorption we discuss in the surface chemistry, but adsorption is I think definitely adsorption is also some property of, we can say as a property of the liquids. In the adsorption case what happens? The molecules in the surface will adsorb certain gases or substances only on the surface. The reason is again same thing that because the molecule on the surface will experience lo lower intermolecular attraction or they will have unbalanced residual physical or chemical forces right. This is. So, this cleansing action of soap, cleansing action of soap is also directly or indirectly is a consequence of this sort of characteristic property of liquids called surface tension right. So, like this now how do we measure the which liquid is having more surface tension and which will have uh, higher surface tension for all this the we allow a liquid to flow along a particular tube and uh, then different liquids when you allow it to flow then by comparing the net rate of flow of the liquids we can measure the uh, surface tension of liquids. For that purpose we use a small apparatus called stalagnometer. Using the stalagnometer one can measure the surface tension. By the way what is the unit in which the surface tension is measure, measured? So, obviously the surface tension is nothing but force acting per unit area as many cases already we have told it is the force inward force that molecules are experienced at a perpendicular directions to the tangential line that is drawn right. So, it is nothing but force that is acting per unit area. So, it is just like the pressure, pressure term, pressure is nothing but force acting per unit area. So, surface tension is also some kind of a pressure, but of course, specifically it is because of the unbalanced residual forces on the surface. So, it is pulled inwards. So, that particular force that is acting per unit area. So, the unit per surface tension is Newton per meter square or dynes per square centimeter. These are the units in which the surface tension is measured. Now, how to calculate the surface tension of any given liquid? For the calculation for a mathematical a numerical value of surface tension is of course, measured relatively for different liquids for, uh, with the relative ratios of their densities. With relative ratios of the densities, we can compare the ratio of surface tensions that is relative value. But before that, the for an absolute value also as we told that the height to which the liquid is raised depends on the, uh, I mean the mass of the liquid that raises up at which the force becomes equal to or uh, the gravitational force where the gravitational force balances. So, with this principle we can derive a small e mathematical equation. What is that mathematical equation and how to derive? Now, we will see the surface tension of a liquid as uh, just now we told either it is measured in the relative terms as ratio of uh, surface tension of the two liquids as uh, gamma 1 by gamma 2. Gamma is the surface tension of two liquids. Gamma 1 is the surface tension of one liquid, gamma 2 is the surface tension of another liquid. 
that will be equal to n1 d2 by n2 d1 that is the d1 and d2 being the densities as you can understand very easily that surface tension is that the inward pull obviously is inversely proportional to what you call the density. So, it is a relative term normally it is measured with respect to water using this stalagmometer that stalagmometer is just nothing but a tube in which the liquid is taken liquid is filled in this first water is filled in this then here of course you will have a gradation scale will be there now up to certain mark level certain fixed volume of uh, liquid is taken in the tube then in this the number of drops number of drops that are fallen or the number of drops that are collected in unit time will be noted first it is done with the water how many number of drops per unit time say in 1 minute or 5 minutes or 10 minutes how many drops of water are collected through this particular hole then into the same stalagmometer of completely drying up then another liquid whose surface tension is to be determined is filled in it then the number of drops of that is measured number of drops of the other liquid collected in unit time within the same time that is 5 minutes or 10, 10 minutes whatever we have taken then how many drops are collected for that this n1 and n2 are the number of drops d1 and d2 are the densities gamma 1 by gamma 2 is equal to n1 by n2 into d2 by d1 so this gives the because as you can understand very easily that suppose if you fill water first and then oil or honey uh, castor oil any such thick liquids whose density is more then obviously it is a very common simple knowledge that water droplets that will be collected through this uh, uh, flow in, uh, will be more compared to the thick liquid or the liquid whose density is more in the same time. The number of drops of honey that you can collect will definitely be less than the number of water molecules and the number of water drops that you collect in same time. So, basically the meaning is that surface tension is directly proportional to the number of drops collected and inversely proportional to the density. So, from that the relative surface tension we, de we can determine like this. For all practical purposes surface tension of a liquid usually measured in this unit in this way only. The other way absolute value of surface tension this is relative absolute value of surface tension how do we measure as we have defined that that to measure we define another term called surface energy. Surface energy as already we told it is nothing but the work done it is a work done it is a work done on the surface of a liquid in order to uh, increase the surface area by 1 square centimeter because by surface tension what we told surface area decreases. Now, if you do some work against this that means against this means in the sense if some work is done on the surface of a liquid such that its surface area will increase by 1 square centimeter that work done obviously will be equal to this surface energy. So, surface energy is defined as the work done in works required to be done to increase the surface area by 1 square centimeter. So, obviously surface energy unit will be arc per square centimeter or joule per meter square. So, the surface energy gamma is equal to work by change in area work is nothing but force into displacement force into displacement by area that obviously will be nothing but force bar unit length that is the reason we define surface tension as the force that is required or uh, the force that is uh, the force by which the force acting on unit length of a surface by which it is pulled inwards. So, it is f by l when liquid raises up in capillary surface tension is balanced by gravitational force this is already what we told. So, the surface energy 2 pi r gamma cos theta here the theta is the angle at which the force that is acting right 
and normally surface tension we have defined that that it is a force that is acting perpendicular to the tangential line that is drawn imaginary line that is drawn in the surface but in general if you say that it is theta then this is r sin theta this is r cos theta right so from this the this is 2r this is the height to which the liquid is raised when the capillary is inverted over the reservoir right then 2 pi r gamma cos theta where gamma is the surface tension is equal to your gravitational force mg so here i mean the mass of the liquid r is the radius of the capillary h is the height to which the liquid is raised and this is of course the gravitational force so now ma mass of the liquid is equal to volume into density so it is pi r square h into d right now 2 pi r gamma cos theta is equal to pi r square h into d right therefore from this gamma the surface tension is equal to this when it cancels right this is equal to r h d g by 2 cos theta where r is the radius of the capillary height to which the liquid is raised rho is the density g is the gravitational force right theta is the angle of at which the force is being applied right now if theta is equal to 90 that is what normally we define it is the force that is acting perpendicularly so that means theta is equal to 90 when theta is equal to 90 this gamma is equal to r h d g by 2 this is how we measure the surface energy right so this is all about the surface tension consequences of surface tension application of surface tension and how to measure the surface tension now after this so so far we have completed the main besides the general properties of liquids the two characteristic properties of liquid what we have discussed is vapor pressure surface tension